On Superman, you're going to experience for about three seconds. This weightless feeling creates the bottom out of the seat experience, what thrill riders call airtime. Watch the breast pocket of the man in the middle of the car. At the moment of zero G, he stops with the train because he's held in his seat. However, his sunglasses, which are not strapped in, continue to travel in a straight line upwards. If the man was not restrained, he would join his sunglasses. Research on test pilots has shown that humans can only tolerate small amounts of negative G because, while accelerating downwards, the liquid part of your body, the blood, lags behind the solid part, the bones and organs. Too much negative G will cause a rush of blood to the brain and the pilot will literally see red and then collapse in what is called a red out. <laughs> Humans can endure more positive G than negative. But even so, designers have to work within limits. If a healthy person is subjected to too much positive G, they will start to lose their vision at around 6G, and at 9G, blood will flow from the brain and they will black out. At 14G, they will die. All thrill ride designers manipulate positive and negative G-forces, but what are they really trying to achieve when they create an ultimate ride? One of the theme park industry's most admired visionaries started his career in cinema, making special effects for James Bond films. Today, he is one of the most successful thrill ride designers in the world. Enthusiasts believe that John Wardley has been responsible for many of the greatest rides ever made. When I create a ride, my ultimate goal is the end result, to give people a thrilling, exciting, amazing experience. And that experience is something that we determine in the brief for the design of the ride. So we might be wanting to give people a scary experience or an intimidating one. We might want to enchant them, to baffle them. All these emotions are the emotions that other forms of entertainment manipulate, whether you're in the theatre or the film industry or us in the theme park industry. We are doing the same thing. We're playing with people's emotions and giving people an entertaining time. To manipulate our emotions and give us the thrills we crave, thrill ride designers use the laws of physics. This ride, Enterprise, is a classic example. It was created in the 1970s and it still inspires designers today. I'm about to be spun round in a circle, vertically upside down, 25 metres in the air, and yet there is nothing going to be holding me in my seat. There are no seat belts, no lap bars, no over-the-shoulder restraints. Nothing is going to hold me in when I am upside down on this wheel, 25 metres in the air. Well, what on earth is it that's holding me in? Well, some of you might say centrifugal force. Well, the physicists don't like people talking about centrifugal force. They talk about centripetal force. But what is this force? Well, it's very simple, really, when you understand. Basically, anybody in motion wants to go in a dead straight line unless some force tries to nudge it off course. So when you throw an object, that object wants to go in a perfect straight line, but gravity pulls you back down to Earth. So when I'm on this wheel, spinning round as I am, I don't really want to go around in a circle at all. I want to be projected in a dead straight line. Yet the seat that I'm sitting on is constantly nudging me around in a circle towards the centre in order to make me spin around. And the force that that seat is applying to me is what we call centripetal force. So it, it's dead easy when you think about it, and it's also great fun. While Enterprise uses centripetal force to hold you in your seat, the latest generation of thrill rides uses the same force to give you the sensation of being thrown out of it. SkySwat opened in 2003 and creates a unique 
pulled out of your seat experience. And check it, Sky Swat's creator wanted to give riders a new kind of thrill. A lot of people like to go up the hill on the roller coaster and then go towards the ground. But then when they get to the ground, they go this way. I want to be able to let them dive towards the ground and then look like they're going to for sure hit the ground and swing underneath. And that was the whole concept there. Sky Swat is the first of its kind in the world. Astro World director Ken Moulsby supervised its construction. They have a piston that pulls the cables tight and lifts us up. So it's a very smooth, computer-controlled process. The computer is monitoring all the time the air pressure in these cylinders. And so what it does is, is as we're rising up here, it's monitoring constantly how fast the boom is rising and how much air it needs to add to make us come smoothly up to the top. When we get to the top here, there are locking pins, and those lock the trolleys that carries the pivot in, and you can feel us settle into place at the top. Now we're hooked up to the main power that will rotate. We have some locking pins that are going to go in place, and we begin to rotate. And depending which side of the ride you're on, you may start backwards and you may start forward. But this is really a nice ride because you feel yourself being pulled out of the seat. That's what produces, I think, a lot of the screen. And it's really a terrific ride to ride on the day when you, you know, it's warm outside, which it is a lot in Houston, because you can just feel the wind rushing by as you go. The end of this boom travels at peak speed, about 30 miles per hour. So it's really kind of a nice feeling to get the wind rushing, and I like this over the top, and you can look down and just see the ground and the concrete coming at you. And uh, it really is a very good, over-the-top feeling to just be going completely upside down while it goes. And, uh, you know, being a technical guy, I like to be able to feel the motors pushing and pushing and doing their thing. You can feel a little bit of that as they go through. Without state-of-the-art restraints, Kent and the other Sky Swatch riders would be flung to a certain death. Kent explains some of Sky Swatch's vital technology. The restraints on this ride are designed to hold you in while you go upside down. This one rock, locks twice at the pivot point. And this one pulls down and locks on my shoulder, so I have two different restraints. Then it telescopes here to lock it in. The seat confines me enough to where this still will retain me in the seat no matter what happens. But there is a design trade-off between safety and excitement, and this has always concerned Stan Chekets. The greater challenge there is to put a restraint on that that doesn't enclose you so terribly much that the experience is lost. See, it's all relative. In other words, I, we could build a restraint with all a bunch of foam and cover you completely up and hold your head, nice big foam stuff, but then you've lost the experience. And I've said for years and years, we need to get the restraint smaller and smaller so that your exposure is greater, because that's what pumps up our adrenaline. Sky Swat's restraint system will hold in comfort a vast range of people, from a seven-year-old girl to a 17-stone rugby player, yet still let them enjoy an adrenaline-pumping thrill.